So how is everybody? No, 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 no. I can't start like this. How is everybody? Okay, let's go. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to talk about VCRPY, or how to cut our testing time. I'm talking about uh, pseudo-integration tests, which are kind of like uh, unit tests, but expanded. So uh, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about what we do at Twist. Uh, what is VCR? Some installation, getting started, a basic example. I want you to go ahead and use VCR tomorrow. So I'm going to talk a little bit about mocking, kind of explain what it is. I'm going to give you one example of how, how to use it. Um, some limitations and solutions, our setup, and how it changed our lives. Is that OK? Yeah. Cool. OK. So what we do, we're using a Django REST framework uh, to build an API for buying custom DNA. Basically, our customers, our researchers from all over the world, that want to program life. And to program life, they need code. So we provide, we basically give them the assembly to do it. Uh, if you want to know more, we have a booth outside. That's all I'm going to say about that. So what is VCR.py? VCR.py is basically an HTTP interaction mocking. It records all our HTTP interactions. What's that good for? For instance, say you have an environment with microservices, right? full of microservices, and you want to test just one of them, but it's part of a whole. Uh, say you have a one, um, one, uh, one service that connects to FedEx or connects to some other REST API service, it needs to interact over HTTP. We want to record that and um, replay it the next time. So the way that it works is very simple. The first time we run our test software, um, VCR records everything that runs against the web service, and the next time we run the same test, it's going to replay it, and it doesn't go against that same web service. So super simple. Uh, so far, so good? Perfect. So installation. It's going to be really complicated, my most complicated slide yet. Um, you may want to start with the following lines. This is going to make your life a little bit easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to define an object called VCR uh, based on VCR.py. And we're going to do one path transformer. It's basically going to make all our, um, all our code have .yaml, which is the format that we're using, uh, have all of that uh, um, by default. Okay? And then we're going to have to choose where all our cassettes, where all our recordings are going to be. And that's going to be in, in uh, whatever library we set it, which is comfortable for us. Then we're going to use record mode once. There's a few uh, modes of record. Uh, once is the, the best mode, basically it means Record this interaction once and never allow it to record again. So if there's some new interaction, it means something has, t has changed in your environment and you should take a look. And what we're going to match on is something super simple. We're going to match on the URI and the method. And this is going to make our life a little bit simpler. We can match on other things as well. But this is, this is what we want to get started with. OK. So here's a basic example. OK. We import from Testo Helpers what we had before. We import VCR. OK? And um, then we're going to do basically a test that does nothing. It's going to connect this, this. I found this site online that basically lets you connect to this uh, API, JSON test, whatever. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print it. Now we're going to run it the first time. Then the second time we run it, it's already recorded. And as you can see, uh, we ran one test in 0 0.043 seconds. That's usually a lot less than the time it takes to create an HTTP interaction because it was already pre-recorded. So, so far, it's a very, very basic example, but it's what we're going to do to everything that we do. Now I'm going to make a short pause and I'm going to talk about mocking. So basically, you know that Python, every, every, um, uh, everything's re reprogrammable. You can take, um, you can take a variable and reassign it, whether it's in another module, in another class, whatever. And then that way you can actually do some kind of man in the middle, the way we like to call it in cyber, okay? Man in the middle or monkey patching to anything we do. And there's a library that really helps us do it. And what I've done now is I've created a view, up, um, a REST API view for Django, uh, which ha basically all it does is uh, sleeps the number of seconds that it gets as an argument and then raises an HTTP 404. So it's really super simple. You tag the URL with the amount of seconds you want and get an HTTP 404. Uh, now we want to test it. But before we test it, we're going to do something uh, uh, that's going to allow us to run it faster in the future. So what we're going to do is we're going to have 
basically, uh, we're going to import mock from unit test. We're going to save the original time.sleep. And then we're going to do, uh, we're going to define our function selective sleep. And based on the environment variable, um, no sleep, whether it, let's say, export no sleep equals one, we're going to pass. Or if it doesn't exist or anything else, we'll go to, um, or it's an empty string, we'll do run the original sleep. So now we're going we're gonna to use this basic mocking. Actually, um, what do I need the VCR.use cassette here for? So actually, the VCR.use cassette is useless in this example. <laughs> OK, it's just there because I write it on all my tests. Because as you can see, the example didn't do anything web related. It was just localized. So uh, it's useless. But the line above it, the mock.patch time.sleep with selective sleep, we actually replace every time we call time.sleep, we'll call selective sleep. Uh, it's important to note that if we write our code, if we import uh, the from time import sleep, it will not work because we have a local reference to that uh, global variable. Okay. So uh, basically, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to run this test. How long is this test going to take? 16 seconds, plus or minus, give or take a few milliseconds, right? So it's going to take 16 seconds. And this is a pretty normal test. You have a lot of the times um, a reason to use sleep in your code. Uh, when you're doing tests, you want to test something that takes a long background process. You want to make the test simple. And I'm going to give you an example later. But basically, uh, if, we run, if we run this, it's going to take 16 seconds. When we run with uh, no sleep, it's going to be a lot faster. OK. So now we're, we're going to run uh, another example. OK. Uh, this is an example I wrote like a, a proxy to the bit.ly URL shortener API. Yeah? Everybody knows Bitly? Show of hands, who knows Bitly? Perfect. OK, so Bitly basically takes a URL, returns that URL, shorten it so you can paste it on uh, sites like Twitter or other places. So um, we're going to, their API, we create a connection, then we shorten the URL and return the response. Uh, you can see that's our, um, that's our basically basic view. That's called the shortened view. That API is pretty cool. Actually, also lets us know how many times people have clicked on that link. It's actually how many times people have been redirected, but it actually checks the user agent to see whether the user agent is some browser or some uh, automated script. So after writing these views, we're going to try and, and test that they actually work. So I wrote one example here. Uh, it's pretty long. I'll run you through it. Let's start by by the first lines, we're actually actually really going to use the, the cassettes this time. Um, we're going to use the mock.patch with selective sleep to be continued in that. And we're going to connect to ourselves. So uh, we're going to post to our own website, our own Django website, um, to that view, to that shortened view, with URL ynetcoil, OK? And we look at the response. We see that the URL has been created. And we have the result in the variable shorter. Then uh, we take, um, the, then we're going to check the amount of clicks that we had. We're going to get the response, uh, check that it's 200, and get the clicks. Then we're going to click it. How we're going to click it, we're going to use the library requests. Um, this is a good point to say that VCR actually hooks on, hooks on monkey patches quite a few number of uh, libraries like urllib, requests, and others. And so it's pretty robust in what it can do uh, and how it can replay the data. So if you have different libraries that use different APIs to communicate HTTP, it probably will still catch them. So next up, we're going to click the button. We're going to click the URL, uh, fake it like we're a Chrome browser, and then we're going to check the status. However, there's a problem. If you run this API in real life, what you're going to get is the same number of clicks. Why? And then you're going you're gonna to see, OK, let's run it in debug. But it works. And then in release, it doesn't work. So why? The reason is there's probably some uh, backstage batch update that happens once in a while. And that's a, probably the way that I, I'm assuming that Bitly works. So from the time you click to the time it gets actually updated, and you can read about it in the API, it takes a while. OK? I, I'm guessing it's to throttle the, the request against the database or some batch update. Anyway, 
um, if we test it immediately after, we're not going to get the result. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop from 0 to 10, and every time sleep a half a second. The total is 5 seconds. Total of 5 seconds. We're going to keep querying every time. Do you know why I put 0 0.5 seconds? To make it interesting for the presentation? Never mind. Okay. Um, but also, I don't want to be throttled out of, of Bitly. So anyway, uh, we're going to go, we're gonna go and, uh, and, uh, and run the, the clicks, run it 10 times. Then uh, if we have a new click, check that we only have one new click, and we're good. This is our test, basically test our API, test the ability of users to check out how many clicks there were to a certain uh, shortened URL. Sounds great. Now let's run the test. So all the tests together, it's like the 16 seconds we had before. Uh, now 22 seconds, so it's, we added like five seconds more, which is those sleeps plus some time making the request and so on. Uh, the second time we run it, now we can see the actual effect of VCR. It's already 17 seconds. But now we don't have the problem of throttling and we don't have the problem of objects not changing over time, right? We don't have this problem. So now we can use the no sleep and here we cut our testing time to 0 0.15. So we had uh, a code that took 22 seconds, now it's 0 0.15. Or if you want to look just at this part, just as this part of the code, it took about, uh, it took about 7 seconds, and 7 seconds we cut it to, um, to, f to, sorry, to, we cut it by 4 seconds, and then we cut it by 3 more, uh, almost to 0 0.1. So I'm, I'm counting out the 16 seconds we had in the test. So, in the, the, the made up 16 seconds we had. So, it's actually really, really cool. And there are some limitations, okay, uh, to using this, like uh, dynamically generated data, uh, post data based request differences. So, we want to get a different response uh, based on our post data. Um, and there are some t singletons. I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. So, I'll give you one example of a limitation. Um, I hope you can follow. Uh, it's a bit more complex. Up until now, I think it been would have been pretty straight off, but these problems are real. We write real code and we really need to test it. So um, this is one example. We create a database record uh, and retrieve the UI, UUID that's dynamically generated. Then we upload a file to S3 with the same UUID name. Okay, now the S3 library will use requests or some other library, URL, whatever, um, to send that file. Then we'll need to link the file to the DB record. So this small process will have a URL with a file name that will be, for us, randomized. Okay. So how do we do that? Basically, the solution is VCR lets us write our own matcher. Uh, a matcher basically lets us decide whether, uh, when we look into the, in the, the cassette database, whether this request should have which response. Okay. So we rewrite the match a matcher. Uh, which basically what it does is, for instance, for this example, looks at the UUID. If the URL has a UUID, then uh, it will remove the UUID for the URL and compare it. Okay? And if it doesn't have a UUID, it will do the normal comparison. So that's basically uh, the whole thing. Then we register the matcher. And then, um, for instance, over here, where we have the VCR.useCassette, we could later use this matcher. Okay? So this is one solution to one problem. I'm sure if you write real code, you'll have the, the ability to, do, you, you probably need to use it at some point. So um, there are some body-based request differences. Uh, when we post data, some dynamic data like UUIDs or others can, or the time or current time, like a created time, whatever, uh, can. So first solution is ignore it, okay? Um, it's, it's really simple, but some of these requests happen one after the other and just keeping the same direction um, of the data of the, the requests will, will make it work. So we don't always need to make sure that the match is 100% is and the code will still run. Of course, in this case, the test won't be 100% because we're not actually sending the request and so on and so on, but uh, we don't know the request might have changed, we'll still get the same response that, that should be. So there could be an error in our code that we would have missed, but it would still be uh, test 99% of our problems. So it's really good. Or we could also write a matcher that will check the body data. So this is the option too. Now this is a huge problem that we encountered. Um, 
it's kind of complex, so I'll try to make it simple. Um, we have actual um, we have actual singletons. Like for instance, we use a Django Django Salesforce um, database um, a database module. Basically, simulates a normal database um, for Python, but actually makes REST queries against uh, Salesforce SOQL. And when it loads, um, it does some initialization. So here's one example to kind of look that kind of looks like it. We run two tests in one file, uh, test number one and test number two. When we run the, the test, uh, the first time that we run test number one, some global, uh, some global object gets initialized. It creates some authentication or some other HTTP request. And then the next time we run test number two, it doesn't run because this object uh, exists globally and it doesn't need to run the initialization. Uh, now we will test every time we run the test, we run the test in the same order, it will work fine, VCR will work. But sometimes we change something in the test, we want to test just the individual test, and, uh, and it won't work because the first time we load it into memory, the object isn't initialized. Remember we had this record mode that only allows us to run once, and after we're running already in recorded mode, if it doesn't exist, it, re it replies with an error that this HTTP interaction didn't exist. So we would run against uh, the database. We wouldn't find the initialization process because, and the reason for that is that VCR creates a playback asset per function. So as long as that object already existed in memory, uh, we didn't have a problem, but now we're testing just one test and in the cassette of that test, it doesn't exist. So this is a real problem. I'm trying to save you time when you implement VCR. You might encounter it if you have some services that use it. So this is just something to keep in mind. Uh, the solution um, sometimes could be simple. Delete the specific recording for that test. Then VCR will be recorded. Uh, always call all the tests in order is another option. Or if you want to, might just delete all the tapes and re-record everything. So those are your options. So either you didn't understand anything or you understood everything. <laughs> I'm hoping it's the latter. <laughs> so um, uh, our development setup, we have a, um, a very nice development setup. Uh, when we develop, we commit to GitHub. Uh, drone uh, listens to GitHub for commits. Then it basically creates Docker and tests our code with our VCR tests. Uh, also allows our test environment to be isolated, doesn't need uh, does it need um, uh, network interfaces? Uh, makes things a lot simpler. Firewalls for the testing. Anyway, the code that gets tested, then we register it to, uh, uh, to a local nexus we have, and then we have another spinnaker, basically takes the code and deploys it. And with this environment and with our uh, pseudo integration tests, we can do some really cool stuff. And it really changed our life. So first of all, Every code that we put in gets deployed. And it's not just simple unit tests, it's actually integration tests. So as long as the environment, the other microservices we have in our env haven't been changed, our code should know how to interact with them. So it really makes a big difference. And uh, the other cool thing is we have our tests and we'll never break on an interface change or anything like that with the other teams. And our code will always work. So when we, uh, when we commit new code, we know it'll work. And actually, the really cool thing is I actually feel comfortable patching directly from my phone. I was out dancing and um, got a phone call, oh, something's not working, logged into GitHub, edited the code from my mobile device. As soon as I commit, got deployed to our dev environment and people could already uh, continue on with uh, QA in a different time zone, uh, which is amazing, you know? It's really, really makes things much, much easier. That's it. That's, that's it. Any questions? Yes. Well, it, it, the, the question was, if I already have a large code base, then how would I go about integrating VCR? There could be some false alarms and whatever. Yes, it, I agree. It takes some massaging, you know? It takes some getting used to it. The other programmers on your team, uh, there's got to be some reference guy in my team. That's me every time. Things get a little bit more complicated. Near uh, tests aren't working. Why? But uh, in the long run, 
uh, when people get used to it, to working with it, it really saves a lot of time uh, debugging and watching stuff and watching changes. But it does take some massaging. Uh, we started out with a large code base and had to integrate it on top. So it, it's not a, it's a process that can be done. It's not that, not that hard. Yes. What happens when someone changes the service in a way that breaks the contract? So it depends. If somebody changes the external services, that's going to be a problem. You know, not our services. If we change our, um, if we change our environment, hopefully our tests will cover it. That's why we have complete integration tests, and we don't just do unit tests for our models. You know. But so the integration test uses mocking. Recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. It doesn't give you 100% recording. We're not going to deploy from this to production. So after that, there's going to be uh, more CI tests that do user clicks and stuff like that, more tests, you know, more complete tests. Uh, but every time we commit to our dev environment, we don't need to test that. 99.9% .9 of the case cases, when we commit, is not when the change happens. Remember that before you commit, a lot of the times, if the change is big, you're going to have to re-record anyway your cassette. So at that time, you're going you're gonna to you're gonna get through all the problems. And every service has this kind of recording, lets them make sure that they're not fucking up for the other teams. Thank you, everybody. We're out of time. Thank you so much. I'm available for questions. I'll be at our booth downstairs. Come and see us. We have chocolate.